Today, I'm gonna to show you a few different ways to wire up an 18 or 20 volt drill battery for your Power Wheels car. Before we get started, please take a moment to subscribe to this channel. This will help you find my videos quicker when you search. Plus, I have some really cool videos that I'm planning on putting out over the next few months. I call this first way of wiring up your drill battery the amateur method. You can either use a battery adapter, which will slide onto your battery, or you can make your own connection piece with 10 or 12 gauge wire and male terminal connectors. On your old battery, you'll want to save the connection piece that connects to the car. So you can cut it off here, or on a battery like this, you can cut it down here to save this top piece. Then all you have to do, connect it to the battery, and then just make a connection for this piece, and then connect it straight to the car. With this method, I guarantee there will be fireworks, which is why you're gonna need a fire extinguisher. This method is a joke. Please do not wire the battery directly to the car. You'll need to add a fuse. And this will go right after the battery adapter. You can connect it here, and then this piece can connect to the car. I've seen so many people use the method of directly connecting the battery to the car without a fuse, and it's not safe. It's a fire hazard. You need to at least add a fuse for protection. With method number two, we're adding the inline fuse to protect the circuit. I just showed how you connect the fuse to the battery adapter, but if you're making your own connection piece, then these male terminal blades will slide into the battery here, and then I used a snap connection piece to join it to the fuse. The downside with this method is if you're using a Milwaukee, DeWalt, or Black & Decker battery, there is no low voltage cutoff protection, meaning that you can discharge the battery too much and ruin it. Most people think that the low voltage cutoff is built into the battery, but for these brands, the battery protection is built into the tool, not the battery. If you use a Roby, Rigid, Makita batteries, they have the internal battery management system, so you do not need to add a low voltage cutoff board. Method number three is to add a low voltage cutoff board and a relay to protect the battery. I made a full video dedicated to this method. I'll put the link at the end of this video. So if you have a Milwaukee, DeWalt, or Black & Decker battery, you'll wanna check this one out. Method number four builds on methods two and three by adding a pulse width modulation unit or a speed control unit to control how fast the car can go. If your battery has the internal low voltage cutoff protection, then the setup is pretty easy. You'll connect the battery's positive and negative to the input P positive and P negative slots. And you'll connect it to the speed control unit with the spade connectors. And remember, you'll still need to add the fuse before it gets to the speed control unit. As a side note, the speed control unit does come with an internal fuse. You can see it here in the red. Actually, the first time I ran the car with the 30 amp original fuse, it popped. So I replaced it with the 40 amp fuse here because I didn't want to take off its cage each time to replace it. So the input is the P positive and P negative from the battery. The motor is the output which connects to the car. So that means we'll take these positive and negative wires and we'll mount our connection piece to the car. Here's my full setup with a Black & Decker battery. I have my battery, a terminal strip, a low voltage cutoff board, a speed control unit, an inline fuse, a 24 volt relay, and I was able to save the original connection piece to the car. You can pause the video to review the diagram, and while you pause, take a moment to like the video and subscribe to this channel. I went over how to set up the low voltage cutoff board in the method three full video, but here's a quick tutorial. Click and hold the button on the left to set the cutoff rate. People often ask what the cutoff rate should be set at for an 18 or 20 volt battery, and there is no one correct answer. But if you set it between 15 and 16.5, you'll be okay. To set the reset rate, click and hold the button on the right. The reset rate should be set at 1.0. I have one more setup that I wanted to show you that I'm working on for a 24 volt conversion. 
It's an ESC, which is an electronic speed controller with a electric bike pedal. This setup will allow the power wheels pedal to function like a real car, where if you tap the pedal, it will go slow, but if you push the pedal all the way down, it will go full speed. And this is important because when you go up to 24 volts, your gearbox will rip apart from the stopping and starting because the gears are made of plastic. Please take a moment and subscribe to this channel. You don't want to miss the ESC conversion video.